Claro. Something strange happens to me the two times I've been in this place. Y es que he sentido la presencia de Dios tan fuerte en esta casa. I have felt the presence of the Lord so strong in this house. Es como si pudiera comunicarme con ustedes aunque no sé su idioma. It's like if I could communicate with you even though I don't know your language. No sé qué pasa en este lugar. I don't know what happens in this place. Pero sí siento una paz tan profunda en mi corazón. But I feel such a deep peace in my heart. Cuando vine la otra vez que me senté en aquel lugar, recuerdo. When I came the other time that I sat in that seat over there. Hoy me siento ahí adelante. Now I am sitting there. Y puedo percibir una paz tan fuerte. And I can perceive such a peace so strong. Que podría pasarme horas y horas sentada en ese lugar. That I could be here sitting down hours and hours. Le quiero decir que aprecien lo que tienen aquí. I want to tell you to appreciate what you have here. Porque por el Espíritu siento. But because uh, through the Spirit I feel. Que Dios le está dando respuesta a cada uno. That God is giving you an answer que to every one of you. That he hugs you. Y que está con ustedes. And that he is with you. Yo observaba su pastor. I was observing your pastor. Y yo decía, yo entiendo lo que está hablando, no sé qué pasa porque yo no sé inglés. And I said, I, I understand what he's saying, but I don't know English. Hay una gracia poderosa en su pastor. There's a powerful grace in your pastor. El Señor lo ha bendecido con la presencia de él en este lugar. The Lord has blessed you with his presence in this place. Así que yo no sé qué voy a predicar, Dios le so, bendiga. I am not the one who's going to preach. God, Un abrazo God bless fuerte you. para ustedes. Strong hug for le you. Amo, all. Son I, mi familia en el amor I del love Señor. you and you're my family in the, the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, that's my wife. Uh, you know, uh, As Pastor was saying, uh, we really have some work in in the DR, and uh, my wife uh, was elected some years ago, about 10 years, um, and uh, she was elected the national director of the women's ministry in Dominican Republic. Yes, about 10 years now. And uh, we have been obeying the Lord for so many beautiful things that have been happening in the DR. As you know, we are about 1,000 churches in the Dominican Republic uh, without little works that are starting. A and uh, my wife has been leading about uh, 40,000 women uh, throughout the nation. Uh, uh, the Dominican Republic is in a great revival. Uh, souls are being Uh, trapped by the Holy Spirit and um, uh, I know that is happening all over the world you know the only thing that sometimes we don't we don't see what is happening hallelujah so uh, I am so glad to be here and uh, I would like to share uh, this message today which I think it's uh, what the Lord has in his heart for you guys I uh, have this word and I expect I hope that it will bring forth fruit in your life let's look uh, up Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 
Amen. Let's read in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. O Lord, I have heard thy speech, and I was afraid. O Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make known. In wrath, remember mercy. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, in this morning, we just give you thanks for your loving kindness, for all you are doing around the world, for what you are doing in this church, for what you did in this church, for what you will do in this church, because you do not stop working, because you do not stop going forward. Lord, I thank you for what you're doing in each heart right now. Hallelujah. For the people you are touching, for the hearts you are touching. Lord Jesus, bring from heaven the touch of your Holy Spirit. Lord, renew our lives. Hallelujah. Oh, from this, from the wickedness of this world, from, hallelujah, the, the vices of this world. Lord Jesus, give us power, give us power, empower our lives with your Holy Spirit, Lord. And we will thank you forever in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Revival, the starting point. Uh, my brothers and sisters, uh, if we talk about the history of revival, it is necessary to speak about the history of the Holy Spirit. But there is one problem, that the Holy Spirit is infinite. How many of you believe the Holy Spirit is infinite? The Holy Spirit is indefinable. The work of the Holy Spirit is indeterminable. The work of the Holy Spirit is unlimited. Right. Hallelujah. Yes, you may know in part the work of the Holy Spirit in you. And not all of the work of the Holy Spirit. Because so much work of the Holy Spirit is unperceivable. And you cannot count it. Hallelujah. You can tell of the work of the Holy Spirit in your own life. But you cannot tell what the Holy Spirit is doing in the life of uh, everybody here. Hallelujah. So the work of the Holy Spirit is infinite is unlimited hallelujah it doesn't have uh, borders at all Amen. glory be to the Lord when we read Genesis chapter 1 verses 1 and 2 the Bible says 
in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. It says, and the earth was without form and void. Darkness was upon the faces of the deep. But most important, it says, and the Spirit of God moved upon the faces of the waters. Hallelujah. You know what this means? Hallelujah. While the while darkness, which means in Hebrew uh, uh, misery, which means in, in Hebrew uh, destruction, hallelujah, darkness was upon the face of the deep, while darkness was upon on, while destruction was upon the, the face of the deep, the Spirit of God was, hallelujah, in the face of the waters. Let me tell you something. Waters, theologically speaking, means multitudes, means people. Hallelujah. I am telling you that the Holy Spirit is moving in, in multitudes. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is moving across and over multitudes of people. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is moving right now. The Holy Spirit is moving. Hallelujah. Around the world. The Holy Spirit is moving in this church. The Holy Spirit is moving in your life. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is doing a work in our lives even though we do not perceive it. Hallelujah. I want to tell you this. When the Bible says that the Spirit of God was moving in the faces of the waters. We have to see this contrast. Darkness was working in the depth of the deep working in the depth of the inner waters. The Holy Spirit was working upon the faces of the waters while, the, while darkness was working in the deep inside, the Holy Spirit was pushing down, hallelujah, to change what darkness was about to do, hallelujah. In the same way, darkness is working in this world, hallelujah, but we have the Holy Spirit pushing down, pushing down, hallelujah, trying to change what is intended to do, what destru the destruction that, 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 that darkness is bringing, hallelujah, the destruction that Satan is bringing to this world, hallelujah, but still the Holy Spirit is working there, the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, is pushing, but, hallelujah, glory to the Lord, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Alabanza. Moses says the Holy Spirit moved upon the faces of the waters. What Moses is using is an indefinite tense, which means that an action occurred in the past 
without taking into account the limitations of that tense. It means that Moses understood that the Holy Spirit was working. But he didn't mean to say that the Holy Spirit stopped moving. The Holy Spirit, hallelujah, is still moving. He said the Spirit of God moved. But it doesn't say that it stopped moving. Moses was meaning that the Holy Spirit is not immobile. Hallelujah. Moses was saying that the Holy Spirit is not static. Hallelujah. Many people believe that the Holy Spirit is static. Glory to God. But brethren, the Holy Spirit is movable. The Holy Spirit is dynamic. Hallelujah. And when the church gets involved in the dynamics of the Holy Spirit, things will happen. Hallelujah. When the church involves in the moving of the Holy Spirit, hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Ah, the Holy Spirit heals cancer. The Holy Spirit heals anemia. The Holy Spirit uh, heals allergia, allergy. The Holy Spirit, oh, hallelujah, heals any spine problems. The Holy Spirit heals spiritually. The Holy Spirit heals emotionally. The Holy Spirit heals, hallelujah, in every sense, hallelujah. The Holy Spirit wants to heal the family. The Holy Spirit wants to heal the enterprise. The Holy Spirit wants to heal the community. The Holy Spirit wants to heal the nation, hallelujah, the nation, this nation, this glorious nation, hallelujah, with so much power, hallelujah. We need the Holy Spirit to touch the U.S. once again. We want the Holy Spirit to touch the people of the United States once again, hallelujah. How many of you want that? Hallelujah. In the Hebrew, the word spirit that is used in Genesis chapter 1 is the word ruah. The spirit, ruah. Now, the meaning of that word is the wind of the Lord. Jesus said that the wind blows from where it wants. And you hear its sound, but you do not know where it goes or where it comes from. And he added up, so are those, so are those that are led by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. You know, this word is like when a bird that flutters, flutters, creating and supporting its little creatures. That's what the Holy Spirit did in the beginning of creation. 
the Holy Spirit would flutter upon the faces of the waters. Do we know what the Holy Spirit was doing? Do we understand the specialized work that the Holy Spirit was doing in the beginning of creation? Was the Holy Spirit moving for nothing? The Holy Spirit was creating life in water. In Spanish, we have an expression that says, water is life. Water is life. So the Holy Spirit was creating life in the water. And later on, the Lord made mud, which is ground with water. And he blew through man's nostril, and the man became a living soul. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit fluttered around Mary when she when uh, the Holy Spirit was about to make the incarnation come true so is the Holy Spirit fluttering on the church on the world so the Holy Spirit fluttered uh, uh, hallelujah upon our lives when we were lost in this world when hallelujah we did not have God nor hope uh, the Holy Spirit fluttered and we came to be a new being hallelujah a new person hallelujah oh glory to God uh, hallelujah the Holy Spirit fluttered uh, <clears throat> In, in the upper room when the, the, the 120 disciples were joined there in prayer hallelujah and something happened oh, all of a sudden appeared a wind from heaven ah, that filled all the house and there were tongues of fire who, uh, who, which was uh, upon all of them hallelujah glory to the Lord Hallelujah. That very same work the Holy Spirit intends to do upon us. Brothers and sisters, revival has had different stages, different momentums. The first wave of revival in the history of the church began in 1727 through 1742. It began, the Holy Spirit began touching Germany and spread through uh, Great Britain. The second great revival started in uh, 1750 through 1791. And it took Germany and spread through Europe in great revival. The third uh, wave of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit began in, uh, uh, in the beginning of 1800, and it covered the U.S. and, and uh, Europe. Then in 1850 uh, through 1900, we find that the, that the great revival in the United States, and there we find that there were men used by God like Jonathan Edwards, uh, Marie Woodworth Etter, 
there, uh, there was uh, uh, many men from the United States were used by the Holy Spirit. In 1900, from 1900 to 1950s, uh, the great revivals in Africa, in Asia, and in Latin America. Right now, the Lord wants to restart another great revival in this world. Hallelujah. The Lord is at the doors. The, the, the Lord is coming. And so the Holy Spirit wants to revive the church once again. Hallelujah. The Lord wants to do the greatest miracles in, in all the ages. He wants to do it now. Hallelujah. The, the church needs to be ready. Hallelujah. The Christian needs to be ready. Something is going to happen. Hallelujah. We, we hear rumors of war. We have, we have listened that, that the United States again uh, is moving uh, 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 bellic artifacts, hallelujah, to uh, the east zone, hallelujah. But no matter what, 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 what rumor you hear, the Lord is in control. The Lord is with us. The Lord is with the church. Hallelujah. Great things happen when Christians ask in prayer for the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Great things happen. Miracles happen. You know, the, the world and some people in the church have lost security in the miracles of the Lord. But let me tell you that when physician says there's nothing that can be done, the Holy Spirit is there to start his job. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, many of us have lost the, the uh, assurance of the work of the Holy Spirit. But no matter what people do, no matter uh, even what the church stop believing, the Holy Spirit is there. The Holy Spirit is firm. The Holy Spirit is, hallelujah, steadfast and will do what he has to do. The church today doesn't see greater things because the church does not ask for revival. The church needs to ask for a revival. The revival is not for a certain time in history. The revival is something that has to occur every day in the life of the church. In fact, every Christian must experience a daily revival. Hallelujah. That's why Jesus requested that the church pray that's why jesus requested paul requested that the christian needs to pray hallelujah when the christian pray hallelujah his life her life is transformed when the christian prays his life is no more cold his life is set in fire hallelujah and that fire is transmitted to other people. Glory to the Lord. And many times we don't want to see the, the world lost, but we are cold. Sometimes we don't want to see the world in sin. However, we are not praying. We are not 
set in the fire of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. When people see that the Holy Spirit is upon you, when people see that the work of the Holy Spirit is moving upon your life, people are going to begin to, to believe. Hallelujah. People are going to begin to shake. People are going to begin to follow Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lord. The Holy Spirit is the promoter of revival. No one else is in charge of revival as the Holy Spirit is. Hallelujah. I cannot live without the presence of the Holy Spirit. I cannot think without the presence of the Holy Spirit. I cannot walk without the presence of the powerful Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I cannot do anything without the awareness of the Holy Spirit in my life. And you, neither can you live without the presence of the Holy Spirit. You have to feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. You have to feel the presence of the Holy Spirit in your bed. You have to feel the presence of your holy of the Holy Spirit in the kitchen. You have to feel the presence of the Holy Ghost in the street. You have to feel the presence of the Holy Spirit everywhere. Hallelujah. When that happens, hallelujah, things are going to happen around this world. People are going to see something is happening in you. People are going to, uh, hallelujah, understand that the Lord is in your life, that the Lord is real, that the Lord has manifested, hallelujah. That's what is going to happen. Hallelujah. Again, we read, O Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make known thy work. Habakkuk is saying, revive. Uh, in the situation of Israel, Habakkuk asked the Lord to revive. his people it was a very sad situation in which the people of Israel was many times the people of the Lord is dying many times the people of the Lord is dead. And, and I preach in my church in this way. Entertainment kills the people. Comfort kills souls no matter if he is a Christian or not comfort 
Hmm. Habakkuk knew that so many things were killing the people of Israel. My brothers, we need to acknowledge that there are things killing our lives. We need to acknowledge that comfort, that entertainment, that social media is killing us literally. And we must do something about it. Habakkuk prayed the Lord and asked him, Revive thy work in the midst of the years. How many of you can pray the same prayer? How many of you can pray the Lord? Lord, revive me. Lord, revive my church. Lord, revive the house of my father's church. Lord, revive the Spanish church. Lord, revive the churches of this city. Lord, revive the churches around the world. Hallelujah. That is intercessory prayer. When the church learns that prayer, when I pray for you and you pray for me, when we, all, we both pray for that sister or for that brother, something has to happen because the Lord hears the cries of his, ch of his children. We need to learn to cry out to the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, revive thy work. Revive thy work. The church is the work of the Lord. Revive thy work. And I am the work of the Lord. Revive thy work. And the pastor is the work of the Lord. Let's pray, Lord, revive my pastor's life, uh, his wife's life. Hallelujah. The leader's, the leader's life. Hallelujah. There are people who are sick. Revive thy work in the midst of the years. Hallelujah. Revive is to manifest life in something or someone who is dying or lifeless. Church members must ask the Holy Spirit to manifest. When someone gives freedom to the Holy Spirit, he will pass it on to many. Every leader should desire the manifestation of the Holy Spirit and go after it. Every minister, pastor must pray for revival. Must promote revival. Must seek revival. Must get involved in revival with the church he pastors. Hallelujah. If this church works and trusts the word and cries out for revival, many things will happen and you will see them. You will see them. In revival, there are healings. In revival, there are demoniac deliverances. In revival, there is reduction of 
criminality. In revival, there is marriage restoration. In revival, there are generational curses destroyed. Many of our failures and our failures have to do with generational curses. And the only way for us to get rid of generational curses is through the work of the Holy Spirit. I tell you, we can die at, a, at the age of 100 years in health. In health. But there are generational curses of witchcraft, of drunkenness, of drug abuse. And all of those things, we need to take them to the presence of the Holy Spirit and tell the Holy Spirit, break down those generational courses. You know, it doesn't need to be a historical church. It doesn't need to be a, a 2,000, 3,000 church, members church. The revival can start in a smaller church. What the Lord is looking for, what the Lord is seeking is disposition of the heart. Hmm. It doesn't need to begin collectively. It just needs to begin through you. The Holy Spirit can do it through you. You can start the revival. Join with your pastor who is always eager to receive the revival of the Holy Spirit. Join with your pastor. Continue praying. Take prayer to the last consequences. And you will see that the gospel of Jesus Christ has been more than useful for you. Any church may have it. It can start by a person. You know, when revival comes, students are transformed. Teachers are transformed. Police people are transformed. Government is transformed. Glory to the Lord. And we, we could say that even though we say that some people in the church do not understand revival, uh, I know deep inside that the church knows what revival is. And I know that the church desires the revival to come. And I know there is hunger for revival and thirst for revival. Hallelujah. People just need a little push. 
and we can be into the revival. People willing to pray. People willing to walk for the Lord. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Amos chapter 8 verse 9. The word says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. May the Lord bless your life deeply. May the Lord bless your life through the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. That all of the Prayers that you have before the Lord may be answered in this season. Hallelujah.